Hello, my name is Jonathan Harris from Worldwide Camera Exchange. Nikon F2 cameras, really decent mechanical, dependable cameras. But if you're buying one secondhand, you do need to what you do need to know what to look out for because the youngest one of these you're going to find is uh, almost 40 years old. The oldest could be pretty much 50 years old. So you do need to check them quite carefully when buying them. Uh, what I'm going to do now is just run through very very quickly what to check when buying the camera. Um, I'm not going to talk about lenses, I've got other videos uh, about buying lenses, I'll put a link up above to, to describe the checks you need to make on lenses. So what I'm going to predominantly do is just, is just focus on the camera itself. Okay, first thing to do is check the metering in the head. Now, not all of these cameras have metered heads. Uh, if you find F2 with a DE1, there's no meters and nothing to check. But if you are checking the meter, just put a lens on it, put the batteries, batteries in the bottom and just, just, just look through. Um, you'll see two types of head. There's the version, the analog version with the needle, and there's the LED version with the LED lights. Just, 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 just check to make sure that the needle is reading approximately correctly. Yeah, you know, compare it to a modern meter, compare it to a modern camera. It'll never be bang on, they never are. But you want it within half a stop or so. And just make sure when you look through, as you change the aperture and you change the shutter speeds, that the LED diodes. Or and the or the the the, 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 the um, needle aren't jumping around. Once you're within the EV range of the meter, you, they should be moving smoothly up and down. One of the faults with these you'll come across is they start jumping all over the place. And if they jump all over the place, that's a sign that there's a problem with the meter. So check check that out first of all. That's the most likely thing to fail on a metered Nikon. To t um, also look through. The uh, look through the glass, look through the prism to make sure that there's no nasty misting or fungus. To get the to get the prism off, you press that button there, and at the same time you push and twist this little thing here. It's a bit awkward. So once you, when when you do the two together, you push that and pull there. It just lifts it lifts off. So just look look it, look into the prism, look through the prism. It can be useful to shine the light through from both sides just to make sure that a there's no misting or fungus inside. I'll put a link up to talk to you about that explains more about fungus and B that the mirroring is all there. Often you can look through these and you'll see there's a black line down the center or the, the black sort of raggedy marks where the mirroring is begin, beginning to disintegrate. If it's slight and the price is right, not so much of an issue, but I wouldn't pay top dollar if the mirroring is beginning, beginning to fail. While you've, got the, um, while you've got the top off, just have a look at the screen. Uh, if you want to drop the screen out again, you push that same button in there and you can drop the screen into the palm of your hand. But just make sure the screen is clean and also look at the mirror, make sure the mirror is clean. One or two tiny little marks, not an issue, but you don't want anything with fungus on or anything with scratches on. Also, while you're looking at the front of the camera, just check this foam strip here. Just make sure this foam strip here is nice and spongy. If you can see a black mark across the bottom of the mirror, that's a sign that this is beginning to disintegrate and beginning to become very, very tacky and tar-like. And while that isn't necessarily an issue, if the foam is failing there, it's also failing in the back. And when it fails in the back, that means the light seals are about to go. So that's something to, 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 to keep an eye open for. So to check that too. Once you're happy that they're all okay, then I'll, qu I'll quickly look over the mechanics of the camera. Set the camera to one second, just fire it on one second and make sure it's doing what it should be doing. Click, whir, click. You don't want it stuttering. You want to make sure that the sound is, is consistent. Um, you can't time it exactly, of course, but you're making sure that the, the shutter sounds roughly as it should. Go on to half a second. Again, you can hear it's faster. You don't know it's half a second, but it's certainly faster than a second. And it's consistent. Go on to a quarter of a second, exactly the same. Consistent, yes. Faster than the half second, yes. You can be fairly sure that that's okay. Um, obviously, if you want to check that absolutely, that it's absolutely spot on, you to put a film through. But from my experience, checking this stuff first, you can be 99% sure it's going to be okay if it, if it passes these tests. Once you've done that, open the open the back. You twist this down on the bottom, like that. Back pops open. Put it on the top, the top speed, the 200 to 2,000 of a second rather. Just hold it up to bright light and just fire the shutter. You want to make sure that you can see light at all points across the film gate. Sometimes you might see light on the left hand side but not light on the right hand side and that's because the, the shutter isn't opening and closing properly. So you want to be able to see light all the way across. Try it on the 2000th, try it on the 1000th and try it on the 500th. And if you can see light all the way across the film gate, again you can be fairly sure that the shutter is going to be, going to be working well. So you've checked out the glass. 
you've checked out the, uh, the mechanics on the shutter. Just have a look here, just make sure the mirror locks up there. They can sometimes, if not when used, get very, 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 very stiff and very sticky. If it feels very stiff, it's probably due for a, due for a service. You can also just, just try the self timer, make sure that's working. Again, if they haven't been used for a long time, if they're due for a service, just make sure that the, um, the self timer is working because that's, that's, good, that's a good indicator. If that sticks, if the mirror lockup's tight, or if it's erratic on the slow speeds, it's due for service. Final thing to check. This is the most likely thing to fail. Um, is the is the light baffles inside? Oh, before that, quickly, I should mention battery chamber. Just make sure there's no corrosion inside. If the battery's been sat in there for a long time, they can corrode. Just make sure that the contacts are clean inside. But light seals, as I as I mentioned earlier on, if, if the foam there is beginning to get tacky and tar-like the chances are that the light seals are also beginning to fail. Now, light seals are rubber-based. A rubber doesn't last forever. It does break down in time. So if a camera hasn't been serviced for 10 or 15 years, you can be fairly sure that these will need replacing. If you look around here and around here, there, 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 are, rub, there are rubber foamy strips. And also down here, there's a rubber foam strip which present, prevents light from entering the, uh, the film chamber. The most Obvious giveaway if they're feet if they're failing is that if you rub your finger, fingers across here and across here You'll end up with a black mark on your finger because where the back closes and pushes against the light strips It begins sticking on them on the on these surfaces here and here So if you rub your finger across there and rub your finger across there if you end up with a black mark You can be fairly sure the light seals need doing not a huge job. It's not the cheapest job in the world 60 pounds, maybe 80 pounds. It's quite a it's quite a messy job. It's quite, um, it takes quite a long time, uh, but it won't cost a fortune. It's not particularly difficult to do. Some people do it themselves. I've tried it myself. Frankly, I'd rather get an experienced repairer to do it and pay them to do it because they'll do a better job and they'll do it a lot more neatly and they're just a lot more experience. Okay, so in summary, you've checked the glass, you've checked the mechanics, and you've checked all the light seals to make sure they're, they're in nice condition. Um, and also, of course, you've checked the, the battery chamber on the bottom. One obvious thing is the cosmetics. Always do look at the cosmetics. These are professionally used cameras. These were professionally used cameras. If they've been heavily used, you'll see dents on the top. You'll see dents on the corners. They're best avoided. I would only recommend buying one of these if it's in nice condition. And if it's in nice condition, make sure that it's, it's both cosmetically sound and mechanically sound. If you find one where the shutter is sticking, not the end of the world, but it will need a service. And the cost of a service probably isn't much more than the value of the camera. So you should, you should, you should, you should buy these very carefully. Obviously put a film through if you can, um, but don't just put a film through. Do quickly run through the checks I've, I've just gone through because for example, a film may not tell you that the, the light seals are going. They may be on, on, on the way out. You could put a film through, have no issues. Six months later, you could start getting fogging. So do, do check the things I've outlined as well as putting a film through. I hope that's been useful. If you have any comments, please stick them in the comments box below. Otherwise, subscribe and like, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.